Well, the problem, in a way, is the 30,000 people in Canada who die suddenly every year. So our research is really trying to focus on the genetic things, the inherited things that make people more likely to drop dead. The one we see the most often, for example, is a young athlete where this happens. And we're seeing those families and trying to determine what the causes are and then use those as lessons to try to prevent the problem on a bigger scale. Trying to understand why some people have a severe form, why people have a milder form, how the inheritance works, what the factors are in our lifestyles, in our environment, in our other genes that make that person more or less at risk, that's a big area of interest for us. We are working on something right now where we're taking these individuals who have had a collapse, where they've had a cardiac arrest, they've been lucky to be resuscitated, and there's no explanation for that. These are not people who have something where there's a gene in their family that causes half the people to drop dead. These are people where there's a, if you like, a perfect storm of a bunch of little genes that are contributing. And where we're trying to go with this is think of an app where you would be looking at your sort of risk score based on a bunch of different genetic factors that you have. And we would take your saliva or your blood, run it through a computer system to look at your genetic sequence, and then use that app to say, you know, your risk of dying suddenly is double, increased by 10%, lower than usual. The risk for your brother, if you were the person who had that cardiac arrest, is in fact quite high and we should put you on a medication, for example, or have you implant a device to protect you or something like that. We're not far from the idea of developing a bunch of things that are really new tests to add to how we understand risk right now. And then that helps us say, you've reached a threshold that means you need to take this medicine. You need to have this thing called a defibrillator. Your family should have an AED in your house, those kinds of things. I think that's an agenda because our healthcare is terribly expensive. We can't really afford to sustain things the way we are by throwing the blanket over the problem and helping a few people. So we've got to focus the lens, if you like, on delivering the right treatment.